The difference between M1 and M2 is pretty much arbitrary. When you go from M1 to M2, usually you will lose a lot of the weight, some of the pressure eventually, and immediately you will lose a lot of closure. Ooh, one, two, three, and that's what makes this hollow sound, it's the lack of closure. If we were to reduce the vocal weight in M1, and we were to reduce the pressure in M1, and we were to increase the closure in M2, everything kind of lines up. Provided that we have basic control over vocal weight, that is, as we go up, we're not getting sort of stressed and pushed, but we're getting sort of just a normal, sort of relaxed voice, M2 blending can be a really good way to get higher. We'll have to start by getting into M2, or falsetto as it's also called. If you don't have access already, just doing a really, really quiet, relaxed hum and gradually raising the pitch whenever you feel comfortable is a good way to get there. I'll link to a good video for that in the description. Once you have access to M2 at all, then you can do this kind of like hollow sound. Now we can look at how to blend. Start off with that really quiet, light sort of voice, the really hollow one, and then just very relaxedly, very quietly bring it down in pitch. It should be able to go all the way down to the bottom of the range without a big jump. If there is a big jump, it might be because you're adding too much pressure. If you put a lot of air into the voice, you'll get a really big jump. What you have to do is feel that sense of build up of pressure and reduce it as you go. Too much pressure, but if you reduce it, then it blends just fine. This is pretty easy to do in a really quiet, light voice, but it's a lot harder to do for a loud one. To work up to being able to do it there, we should do this a lot in the quiet voice first, and we should also be able to go back up again without any issue. It's okay if it's unstable, but there shouldn't be a big difference between M1 and M2. It shouldn't be substantially louder or substantially sort of more pushed or anything like that. One will be a lot more hollow than the other, but that's about it. Once we have this down and then back up kind of exercise done, we can have a look at doing the louder version. The louder version is harder because we're more likely to add pressure to it. And the more pressure you add, the more of a difference there is between M1 and M2 when you get there. Basically, the pressure wants to convert to vocal weight and drop the pitch, but it can't really do that in M2. So you can add tons of air in M2 and it doesn't do anything, but as soon as you reach the threshold at which you can be in M1, suddenly now it drops. So when we do this loud one, we have to be careful not to push the voice to get loud, but instead just kind of like have a relaxed yell, like this. Ah, ha, like that. This is kind of like the most relaxed way that you can make a relatively loud sound this high. If you have any trouble with any sort of tension or difficulty or really any kind of issue at all at this point, then you should do something like pitch hills or softies or anything else that's going to get you to relax the voice up here. There is also that video in the description that will help you as well. If we're going okay at this point, then we just try to do the same thing we just did with the quiet one. First we get consistent going down, and then we get consistent going down and back up again. Going back up again is going to be a lot more difficult. You want this to feel like you're not really doing anything different to what you would normally do for speech. So it shouldn't take any effort at all, it shouldn't feel like you're doing a lot of work. It should just feel like your voice is well coordinated to do this. If you don't feel like that, try going a little bit quieter and just keep going until you can gradually build it up. Now, this won't translate into speech very well. It gives you the basic sort of configuration and it makes the M2 sound a little bit better. Ha! Versus but it doesn't just give you a really high intonation range without any issues. The noise, wind and the sun, that could just still happen. Instead, we have to train that separately. We have to train the integration with the normal speech as a separate thing. We have to learn the skill first, 
but we still have to apply it somehow. There are lots of different ways that you can apply this. The easiest being just have slightly high intonation, let it break if it needs to, reduce the volume if you need to, and just gradually lean towards having a louder but still blending voice. That's probably the most straightforward. Another way is with phrase repetition. With phrase repetition, you basically just say some phrase and you intentionally make the intonation go to the point where it would have to blend a little bit with falsetto. This means that your voice has to make these changes or else it will kind of break and yodel. Having it break or yodel is better than it being stressed and forcing it to stay in one though. So it's better to have the nose went in the sun than the nose went in the sun. But eventually you're going to end up with the north wind and the sun had a quarrel, where there is a kind of smooth continuation of the voice as it goes up higher. You can say any phrase that has high intonation in the middle, such as the north wind and the sun had a quarrel, or the phrase that I typically use, which is when you draw your lines, this phrase goes really high, but it's not really like a stressed or loud voice. So it's fairly easy to integrate this into, you know, blending M2. Basically, you just say this phrase and you start at random pitches. That's very important. You don't want to start at some like arbitrarily chosen pitch. You want to do it at random pitches. If you choose to do it at like exactly F3, you're probably going to stress a little bit more because you're trying to achieve the goal. Rather than trying to achieve a goal, you just want to explore the range. This includes going fairly low and trying, sometimes, going fairly high. Here's an example of phrase repetition. When you draw fewer lines. 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 The idea is to have a priority system like this. The worst thing you can do is stress the voice as it goes up. When you draw fewer lines. The next best is to have it yodel slightly. When you draw fewer lines. And the best is to just have a smooth continuation. When you draw fewer lines, no matter what you do, you always have to make sure that you come back down to just a normal voice. You don't want to stay in falsetto, you don't want to stay in that M2 mode. So don't do the north wind and the sun had a quarrel. But you can do the north wind and the sun had a quarrel because it's come back to a good position. Eventually, you will start to just integrate this naturally into your normal speaking voice as you use it for intonation. If you want to use it for singing purposes, you could speed up the process by trying to do the slides a little bit louder again, but you just want to be really careful that you don't add strain or um, effort in, and you want to be careful specifically about adding a bunch of pressure and then causing an imbalance, and then you fix that by tensing up. Instead, you want it to be a very natural process, and you want it to just sort of happen subconsciously. Eventually, you'll be able to get loud enough that you may as well be belting, uh, but this takes quite a long time, and you have to actually be kind of trying to make that happen a bit. For normal speech purposes, though, this will be enough. Hope that helps, and I'll see you on the next one.